Teresa, me oyes? I haven't dreamt of you since that night, but now I speak to you almost every day, every night. Perhaps you are so ingrained, engraved in my mind, my consciousness, that you no longer live, lurk, love below the threshold, below our frontier, below the liminal, sub-limbo. You are becoming engraved in myself as he engraved his self in you, carved himself into the surface of yourself, scorched himself into the flesh of your core. I do not need to dream of what I am doing to you, because I am free to do it now. I am always already doing it, to you. Or perhaps better to say that you are always already doing it to me. You're making yourself a dwelling place in my core, in the marrow of my mind, at the heart of my palm. If I am approaching you, moving towards you as you approach him, I suppose I ought to think of you inside me. Perhaps this, our, us, is not so much a question of my embodying you, your practice, your text, as it is a question of my embodying you to the extent that you come within me, inside me. I imitate you through the body of my text, through the body of your text, through your text as body. How do I see you? How do you see him? Do we see each other's other in the same way? Of course not, but I hope to follow in your footsteps, follow and map the patterns of your textual corpus, the relic of your linguistic corpse that lies before me. I want to see you. I want to see what happened to you, in you. Seeing is important here, seeing you, seeing yourself. I want to trace your form, feel where it happened, feel how it happened, touch the sight of your sight with my eyes, feel the cord between us on my tongue, see your form, the shape of yourself running through my fingers. I want to hold you in my mouth as you embrace him in yours. I take you into me, take you within me as you take him into you, sucking and suckling from the page. There is a gap, of course. Not just vertically, between myself and yours, through which I am to ascend if true transformational imitation is my end. A Teresian Christ. But we mismatch and disassociate horizontally as well. I am always already two steps behind and on a divergent, diverging path. I see you through the text, the body of yourself, but I'm not sure I will ever touch you. I don't believe you will touch me as he touches you. You come inside me through the eye, through my mouth. The body of your text, the text of your body, fills my mouth. I form it with my lips and under my tongue. You move under my skin, into my skin. Should I not be moving into yours, embodying you, not vice versa? I may see your corpus with the eyes of mine, but you move inside me orally, through the shape of your word in my mouth, the shape of you as word. Reading, pronouncing a consumption. Do I consume you through the text, or do you consume me? You took him into you, you ate, chewed and drank and savoured both his symbolic bodies. You consumed his manhood in bread, blood and text. But it was you who came into him. Taking him inside you engulfed you within him. His self that always already lay within you. This is the only relic of you I can touch. The only part of you open to me at a tangent to his self as word being that primal, primary body that was, that is open to you. The page marks the thresholds, the frontiers that demarcate the gaps between us. Him to you, you to me. They hint, they promise a touch, a point of contact, a bridging, a coming together, but then they divide and remind. They make clear the distance I have to go. The space between us I am always already yet to traverse, yet to transgress. The object of the body, relic, text, it not only allows you to pull yourself closer to him, consuming his word on the page to climb the cord towards a touch, a taste of him, but it makes you increasingly conscious, unconscious perhaps in another mode, of the split in you, in you as two. The text as touch paper fans the flame of your burning for him. Do I burn with the same desire for you? 
who is to say that the itch I feel to see you, yourself, to understand how you are formed, what you experience, this urge to map out what is going on, is any different from your urge to see him, to see through him. Your desire is for him, to become undone in and through him, unlaced, engulfed, but it is a sight of him, the sight in him that is your undoing. Yet you don't see in the sense of the word sight. You see in the sense the word, the truth. You sense the word, in fact, intact. When you see him, you aren't seeing him through the body, through your body, even when you see his body in relation to your own. You see him inside yourself, through the body of yourself, even if you see him in front of you, at your side, your spouse. You are almost non-visionary. You see him through yourself, body and soul together, but not the eyes of your body. You take him inside you with the mouth, through the lips, your throat and the sight of him emerges. It is provoked, sparked at the very marrow of your bones, through somewhere rooted throughout your being, yourself as being. The sight of your sight is not ocular. You take the word inside you and begin to see from language, see his life, see him, see through him. This first realm of your sight, of your language, I can run beside. I can walk parallel to you as you envision his life as a body from his body of the text. You watch him from within yourself, see him bleed, see him suffer, place yourself at the foot of his body undone, unmade, prostrate upon the cross. From the words of his life you model yourself in his image. You make an image of him for yourself, within yourself, an image taken from his words. The first sight of your sight is behind the word, your image of him behind his words. This I can see. I can join you as you actively envision him before you. As you conjure him from text so I can conjure you from the body of yours. Not you as such, from your body as text. I can conjure, consume, I can envision, encircle what you saw. I can catch a glimpse of your sight of him, the sight that follows from your word image view of his life. I can peep into the next realm of your sight of him, you and him, him in you, you in him. I don't think I need to see him as you saw him here. It's not him I'm searching for, nor his experience I strive for a sense of. But I do watch you, watching him. You envision him, conjure him in, through and for yourself, and it sets the scene for him to then come to you as body. It lays the ground, sets the palette for him to come into you, to conjure himself, present himself as man, as flesh of the word. Your sight of him is passive. He comes in you, or perhaps to better, to, to say he reveals himself to you, shows you his self within yours, permits you a glimpse of him dwelling inside yourself. The sight is not unprovoked, unwelcome, in fact you yearn for it, you ache with longing for him. But it is something he bestows upon you as you begin to move outside yourself. You see him visually, he is given to you, he gives himself to you visually, corporeally. Not in the sense of your corpus, your core, but through a sense of his. Your sight of him is located in his body. You see your beloved, the man, the myth, the legend, the flesh of the word you so desire. And then you see nothing. No es nada. Non-vision, non-seeing sparked from language. He comes at your most intimate level, that most cryptic essential point of view, beyond form, beyond image. He, you, are now so close that you have no need for sight of him. You are at the sight of him. You may have consumed him, sucked and swallowed his flesh from the page, but he has engulfed you, swallowed you, drawn you up into himself to the point of your undoing. You are so close, you are blind to him, but not blind through him. You lose sight of him. He does not give himself for you to see, but you are now so closely woven in him, compressed like beads along the cord that you see through him. He becomes your lens, your sight. There is no longer any need for any image between you. You are so close, so ecstatic in him that there is no space, 
no need for an intermediary to traverse the gap between you and him. Will you ever come for me the way he comes in you? Give yourself to me as he gives himself to you, as you gave yourself to him? That is not quite what I am looking for in you, what I hope to see from you. I want to see you seeing, see how you see, not what or who, see your sight. Honestly, I'm not even sure you see at all. It seems to me that to see for you is yet another layer of imagery, another parallel. Your corpus, the body of your text, is constructed through these layers of image. You replicate the first realm of your sight, your sight of him from the textual relic of his life as flesh of the word, in the text relic you leave for me. A body of word images, a source for a seeing of language that never truly touches what you see of him. You continuously encircle yourself yourself in him, with images yet in text, in this relic, your relic, you claim to always remain at a distance. No word image ever even caresses, brushes against your sense of him in you, you in him. The image I conjure from your body, what I envision from your corpus, is always already at a distance from that which you saw in, through and from his. Our gaps are yet to be closed. Not only because of my distance from you, but because your word images rest at a distance from him, from your sight of and through him. What I see in you is only ever a comparison, a parallel for what you see in him, an image of an image, a sight for a sight, an eye for an eye. All your images, all your seeing, all your visionariness is only a mode of conceiving your experience of being in him. Vision is cognition, a making visible, tangible, sensible. Seeing is only ever a way for you to make sense of you in him, for me to make sense in, of and from you, to sense your body. And you yourself see yourself as an image, an image of him, an image of the word imitating the original image of that word in order to perfect yourself as his image to get closer to that word, the word as him, as your lover, and the word you strive for for yourself. The cord that runs between our gaps, our split cells, flows from word to image, from image to word, from him to you and you to me. This is how you reach him, how you approach him, flowing from word to image, image to word, compressing the coiled textual cord that passes through the page, through your lips, in and out and into mine. Your lips meet his through the word. Your mouths meet and merge in a kiss of text, holding each other's forms within your separate selves. Two conjoined, united, compressed, engulfed in one through a touch of the word.